Hey guys, welcome back to this series of videos on static timing analysis concepts. And in this video, we will try to understand how static timing analysis is implemented in CMOS digital design or in the ASIC design flow. So without wasting time, let's get started with the topic. In CMOS digital design or in ASIC design flow, STA can be performed at many different stages of implementation both at logic design phase and physical design phase. We know that in ASIC design flow, the first flow is actually the architectural design and then the, then the micro architecture comes into picture. And then the real design starts at RTL level. The RTL design is the main implementation stage, but static timing analysis is very rarely performed at RTL level. And there are two reasons to this. First is, it is more important to verify the functionality at RTL level because we want to make sure that whether a logic is correct at that point and also not all the details which are needed for running a timing simulation or timing analysis is available at RTL level. That is because we may not have a clear description right at RT level we will have the description of the design in terms of RT co level components such as adders multipliers registers or comparators like that the lower level implementation of the design is not yet available so we will not be able to do timing analysis at that stage but once the design at RTL level has been synthesized to the gate level the STA is used to verify the timing of the design but at the beginning of the logic design stage, such as at the synthesis stage, after uh, we synthesize the RT level to gate level at least, the ideal interconnect is assumed since there is no information about the physical placement available. We don't know whether uh, this cell is going to sit at this place or not. We just have the logical description. So we also don't have any information uh, about the interconnects as well, in which layer of metal we are going to route and what is the length of the wires and many other things are unknown. And this kind of model that we use where ideal interconnect is considered, when I say ideal interconnect, which that means we have zero propagation delay from one cell to another cell. This kind of situation is called as zero wire load model which means to say that we consider that the output load from the wire is actually zero. So only the intrinsic cell delay can be used at this phase. Also another technique can be used at this stage to estimate the length of the interconnect using a wire load model as well. The wire load model is nothing but it provides the estimated RC values based on the fan outs of a cell. If the output of one cell is connected to four cells it will calculate the R and C values uh, for that cell the uh, load for that cell uh, by considering how many fan outs or how many cells are connected to its outputs but this kind of estimation is highly pessimistic it's not that accurate so why are we running even though it is not accurate enough that's because it at this stage the main focus of timing analysis is actually on the logic that contributes to the worst parts. So if we have the worst parts because of the logic, the designer can change the logic so that it becomes better for timing and then implement it and give it to the physical design. So we will see and understand in the flow diagram how this STA is carried out at different stages. So this is the diagram of the ASIC design flow where we use static timing analysis at different stages. As you can see, after synthesis, STA can be run before logic optimization in order to detect the critical timing paths. Actually, after synthesis, logic optimization also happens in the entire logic design. Logic optimization such as the input reordering, input and output buffering, all these things will happen. So these logic optimization can be power or speed or performance or area optimizations. Now for this logic optimization to understand which path is critical for timing, to do timing optimization, it needs the timing run to happen before the logic optimization. So we can carry out 
that sta before logic optimization and then we will understand okay these are the worst paths where we need to do some optimization and then it will carry out optimization and once again after the optimization we can carry out another sta to check what is the status of timing of the design so if it is still worst we can carry out some other changes again and then we can move it to the physical design as i told earlier at this stages we will use mostly the zero wire load model where we will not consider any load connected to the cell at physical design phase once the placement is carried out we can also carry out the static timing analysis now we will know that the interconnect may take this much length right so the depending on the wire length of the interconnect the rc value can be estimated but still it is pessimistic and it will not have the details of resistance and capacitance values also at after placement stage the clock tree is not built yet so we will not have enough information about clock tree as well so clock tree is considered to be ideal at the initial stages of the physical design that is uh, before this clock tree synthesis after this placement so at this stage we will not have uh, much accurate static timing analysis carried out but still uh, it is better than the logic design sta because we will know the real placement of the cells once the clock tree has been built we will have much better understanding of the clock its source latency its network latency and this clock skew and jitter and many other information which are uncertainty informations basically so with those understanding our sta will be much accurate compared to the sta which is carried out at this placement and previous stages and at each of these stages if too many violations are reported then there could be a reason for that so we may have to debug that and then fix and then go forward to another stage finally when the routing is complete our design is mostly complete and once the routing happens the dfm related fill also happens the metal fill also happens after this stage the design will be sent to an extractor the extractor is a tool which carries out rc extraction the resistance and capacitance extractions from the metal at this stage we can consider the coupling effects of the net which is beside or adjacent to the net we are considering so the crosstalk and noise effects are also being taken into consideration at this stage of the design so the sta carried out at this stage of the design will be most accurate since the real value of r and c are used also the clock tree is ready and also they will have the coupling effects taken into consideration and this sta which is carried out at the end phase where considering all the effects and it is most accurate it is called as the sign off sta or sign off level sta if timing analysis comes clean after this uh, at after this phase the design can be taken to the timing closure so to summarize what we have understood about the sta is sta is carried out at the different phases of the ic design flow or asic design flow but sta depends on the interconnect model whether we are using the zero wire load model or then uh, we will have multiple other models whether uh, whether we are estimating the interconnect uh, resistance uh, or cap and capacitance or we have used the real value of r and c from the extraction also the sta is done with or without the real clock tree synthesis that is happening so without the clock tree synthesis it won't be accurate and with the clock tree synthesis it will be much more accurate and also sta is done by taking consideration of uh, uh, coupling effects such as crosstalk or not is also another factor which will decides which will decide its accuracy so usually the coupling effects or noise effects will be taken into consideration at the sign off level sta where we are about to close our design but at modern technology nodes some of its effects are taken into consideration at the initial phase but it is still a little bit less compared to the other effects so i hope you got some idea about 
how static timing analysis is carried out at different phases of the design and what kind of accuracy is maintained at different phases of the IC design flow. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.